Barbara Rossi, an ordained minister of the ELCA and a professor of New Testament at our seminary in Chicago, would call this day, this All Saints Day, the Day of Lamb Power. In her book, The Rapture Exposed, written in response to the misguided and horrific theology, perhaps even heresy, of those Left Behind series books, Rossi points us to the truth of the Revelation passage before us this morning. And it is indeed filled with lamb power. Just prior to our text this morning, John Patton's the author of the book of Revelation, responding to the question, who shall stand before God, has identified the number 144,000, 12,000 each from the 12 tribes of Israel. But then he looks, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes, all peoples, and all languages, standing before the throne and the Lamb robed in white with palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed John, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where do they come from? I said to him, John says, Sir, you are the one that knows. And then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and they worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Isn't that an awesome vision of heaven? Throngs of people, too numerous to count, of every tongue and every nation, all dressed in white robes, all waving palm branches, all singing praises to God and worshiping God night and day, without getting tired or hungry or hot or cold, without sickness or disease or brokenness or death, without pain, without sorrow, without tears. They are alive and well, abiding there, worshiping there in the shelter the wings of the Almighty. How awesome heaven must be. And it becomes even more awesome when we comprehend how it is that these throngs of people came to be in heaven. John of Patmos writes, salvation, more accurately translated victory, salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. This Lamb's name is Jesus. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the Lamb of God who was slaughtered but is now standing. He is the Lamb once crucified but now risen to life. He is the Lamb who lives at the center of God's throne. And because He lives, those who have been washed in His blood also live and never die. That's the Lamb's power given to us in baptism because, you see, in those waters of baptism, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. We are marked with the cross of Christ forever, and nothing, nothing can ever take that away. It's the mark of Jesus. It's the mark of the Lamb. It's Lamb power, our assurance of the sure and certain hope of the resurrection promise. Jesus, the Lamb, is also our shepherd. John tells us in this passage from Revelation, he tends to us. He feeds us. He protects us. When we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he's there with us, leading us to those springs of the water of life, back to these baptismal waters where eternal promises were made. And when we die, 
our shepherd carries us in his arms to the throne of God where those eternal promises are fulfilled. And we, through the certainty of Christ's resurrection, through that Lamb of power, are received there as one of God's own. They are alive forever, joining in the worship and the singing and the joy of life in the presence of God and the Lamb. Salvation and victory belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. That's the promise made and fulfilled for four of Zion's members this past year. Cherie Bowie, Rebecca Baines, Miriam Drugers, and Todd Earhart. In addition, I, as your interim pastor, also presided at services for three non-members, Scott Dalton, Lowell Norquist, and Emma Dalton, Scott's mom. They were came to us through a, an acquaintance with uh, the Boy Scouts. And so, even while we grieve for these loved ones we've lost, on this side of heaven we grieve, we also can rejoice with them in their gift of eternal life. I heard Bill Mims say on one All Saints Sunday in his sermon, he said, you know, all the saints of heaven are right here, right here. He said, they're, they're beyond that wall right there. We can't see them, but they're there. The saints of heaven singing and praising God with us as we worship. What comfort that brings. But what about those of us who still as yet walk by faith? What does this All Saints Day say to us? What does this day mean to those newly baptized here at Zion this year? Eleanor Resize, Olivia Beard, Kaylin Bigham, and Brantley Williamson, all little ones who received the baptismal promise at this spot this year, and who one day, like each of us, will receive the fulfillment of their baptismal promise. What does this passage say to those of us who walk as yet by faith? Well, Barbara Rossing says this. She says, from the beginning to the end, Revelation teaches a theology of the cross, the theology Luther found in his studies of the scripture, the theology we, we, we celebrated last week on Reformation Sunday. A theology of the cross which teaches that God's power, lamb power, is made manifest in weakness. Evil is defeated not by overwhelming force or violence, but by the lamb's suffering on the cross. And as followers of the Lamb, our baptismal calling is simply to be followers of the Lamb, standing with Him and going wherever He leads all the days of our lives. So wherever we go, to school, to work, shopping or at home, infant being nurtured in the faith by parents and congregation, or on up in years with a faith based on an absolute helpless <laughs> trust in the blood of God. Wherever that is, wherever you are, everywhere we go, everywhere we go, through the mark of the cross on our foreheads and the Holy Spirit sealed within us, we walk and live our baptismal faith. On this earth, we live our lives oriented not around the world's values, but around Jesus' self-giving love, which shows us and therefore we show others the power a vulnerable but strong love to change the world. Blessed are they, Matthew writes. Blessed are we. Blessed are we who are baptized into the life, death, and resurrection of the Lamb and privileged to live lives following in His footsteps here on earth until the day comes when we follow His footsteps into the presence of God and the Lamb forever. Amen.